So the quality on this may not be the best. <coughs> Sorry. But let me work on it. So over the past few weeks, I have two leg workouts that I filmed and did my best with in terms of like editing and everything. And so I'm going to now do a little voiceover. My hair is really wet, so that was a really bad idea. But I'm going to do a voiceover um, for both of them. And this is going to be the first video. And then the second one will be a different workout. <clears throat> Some of the exercises do repeat. Um, I don't think that's a big deal because honestly the only way to learn something is through repetition so I'm going to keep explaining exercises that I think are really really awesome and really important for building any type of muscular base in order to just become a better athlete become more consistent in the gym so if I do repeat an exercise most likely I, re I have repeated it because I think it's very effective so keep note of that and as I am speaking over all of the exercise footage, the name of the exercise will appear in case you have to like rewatch this and keep it on silent. And how many reps I did will also be there, as well as whatever muscles I personally do believe are targeted through the exercise. So just trying to help you out. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start off with um, a different clip of me doing <clears throat> sumo deadlift so a deadlift traditionally is more of a back and glute exercise the sumo deadlift changes your foot position so your feet are a little wider so I pointed out and um, your hands actually go between your knees instead of uh, outside of your knees and the reason for this is it allows you to go lower like it's easier to sit down lower and engage your glutes more I prefer this method of deadlifting because it doesn't really hurt my back um, I'm really weak in terms of my traditional deadlifts because of my grip strength and because of my lower back. So I'm working on those and one of the ways to work on that is by doing a sumo deadlift. By no means is this a beginner exercise, but if you keep the weight very, very light, like just use the bar or use one of those pre-made barbells or use a different type of weight like a kettlebell or a dumbbell and you hold it with your hands like this, you will be able to practice the form and practice how the exercise feels and then work your way up from there. And I highly recommend these just because it's a really great way to become stronger. And this was the, this is where the footage starts for the day I actually did this workout. I had to use different footage because my ankles were really bad for the deadlifts, but this is a curtsy lunge. A curtsy lunge, or uh, I have clients call it a lady lunge, which is really cool. You basically step backwards into the sides, side, um, and the leg that is, still is the working leg so that's where you should be feeling it I adore these lunges because they teach you a lot of balance and they also get your body to use different muscles um, in the side of your glutes and uh, your quads as well so like the front of your legs and you can load these very differently by loading I mean how you hold weight if you choose to hold weight if you're a beginner do these without anything in your hand just focus on getting the form down and going as low as you can so almost with your knee touching the ground, not like touching, don't bang your knee against the floor, but almost touching the ground. I'm using kettlebells simply because these were the closest thing to me at the time and I was lazy and didn't want to walk to the other side of the gym. But if you want to hold a barbell on your back, if you want to hold something on your side, um, the reason I, I always choose these over side lunges. A side lunge is when you just step to the side, go down and then come back up because there's really little momentum involved in this exercise and it truly does target also like a big uh, sorry it also has a big aspect of flexibility because it requires you to just stretch your muscles a lot more when you're bending down i highly recommend these i think they are very beginner friendly if you don't weight use weight with them and you're just focusing on moving um your muscles in that way and then slowly as you become more comfortable with it i don't know what to do with my hands during this video i'm sorry um slowly as you keep doing it you'll be able to add weight, um, add a bar, do these faster, slower, control how you want to do them. But for right now, just focus on getting into the exercise. And I love them. I do them basically every leg day because I have like staple exercises that I just really enjoy doing. Um, another key thing to remember with these is that if it does 
hurt like the stretch hurts too much then focus on stretching before and after your workout uh, this is another exercise that has grown in popularity it's called I, DB means dumbbell just for reference a Romanian deadlift means your legs are mostly straight so the first deadlift I did I was bending a lot more my legs were a lot wider apart this my feet are shoulder width apart and I'm keeping my back straight for the exercise and only going as low as my back allows me to go I'm using pretty heavy weight here 40 I would start off with something light like 10 or 15 and work your way up and the key is to push with your heel to bring yourself back up if you feel this in your lower back or in the front of your legs meaning your quads then you're doing it wrong you need to focus on pushing up with your heel and using your glutes and your hamstrings to straighten up and then repeat the movement um, this is really good because the dumbbells allow you to trace your leg more so you work more on your flexibility and just overall grip strength because like holding heavier weights can be very stressful on your hands so this has helped me a lot I'm by no means like a very strong person but this has helped me like become less of a weak person I think that was like okay English right there this is another variation of that exercise that I usually do with it and it's just doing it um, unilaterally or straight leg so a straight leg version of any exercise basically challenges your balance and also makes sure that one leg um, isn't stronger than the other so I'm right-handed and I have the habit of using my right leg to do more of the work than my left leg or my right arm over my left arm so by doing stuff like this I try and even that out so I train my body to use both muscles or both limbs equally on both sides um, I also like challenging my balance a lot because I have very very weak balance naturally so this helps with that I'm leaning my hand on a chair in this clip um, this is when I feel weaker I'm more tired and I don't want to like teeter totter like this so if you're a beginner do it like this if you're more advanced or you have just impeccable balance try doing this without leaning on anything and keep the weight um, on the same side of the working leg and the working leg again like with the curtsy lunges is the leg that's still and like on planted on the ground so that's a key point also keep the weight light until you're like very used to this exercise um again this is for your hamstrings and your glutes i have heard people when i've asked them to do this exercise at first they will complain that they feel it too much in their back if you feel anything in your back too much don't go down as low it's oh that person just walked through that's really rude but uh, don't go down as low I have worked up to being able to go down as low as I do just by repetition but go down only until your knee or even like until half of your thigh until you feel safe and comfortable doing it if you don't feel safe then please stop doing the exercise it's it's not worth feeling like you're going to strain a muscle unnecessarily because even though this is going to work your lower back I don't want it to break your lower back so I'm just looking out for you <laughs> oh I'm trying <laughs> I'm sorry I don't know what to do during the middle of these clips I'm just gonna keep going oh I'm done all right so I recently started doing these exercise this ex particular exercise and I I love it so much it's so much fun but um, I just realized if I go really close to the camera you understand that I don't have eyeliner on right now and like I'm gonna just stay over here so this is called a frog bridge well that's what I call it you keep your heels together and you keep any type of weight on like your midsection um, be careful with choosing a really heavy weight I don't want it to hurt your bones or your hips and you just press up using your glutes and that's it's basically an isolation exercise, so you're only working um, your glute muscles instead of your hamstrings, which is like the back of your leg, or the quads, which is the front of your leg. I really like this because um, sometimes I feel like I'm using my other muscles to compensate, and also it's just like it's just like a fun exercise to do, but it gets you like some really weird looks sometimes, so just be mindful of that because I think someone thought I was just doing an exercise wrong. but. This is another uh, superset. I did a superset, by the way, is two exercises done back to back, and you don't take a rest um, in between the two exercises. So the first one I'm doing here is just a simple sumo squat. Sumo meaning my feet are, again, like pointed out and wider past shoulder width. These are very, very difficult for me. I don't know why. Um, they really, really challenge the flexibility of like your inner thigh and your outer glutes. And when you put come up, push through your heel in order to make sure that you're using your glutes to push you up instead of like your quads as much or instead of your lower back 
If you feel this in your lower back, please do not go as low. I, I repeat that a lot, but it's very, very important because I don't want anyone to get hurt when they're doing this. This is another version of a deadlift that I thought I'd do because I was on the platform. This allows me to just go deeper um, because the floor isn't in the way like in a traditional deadlift. And I really enjoy it because I just feel the stretch more and it's a different foot placement. Again, like, <laughs> I'm so bad at this. It's like this. So, um, because when you're pushing with your heel up, it's easier to feel it in your glutes than other muscles in your legs for me. So, I highly recommend doing this and doing them back to back just makes it, I don't want to say fun because it kind of hurts a lot, but it's like fun in an effective way. Yeah, and now, now I'm just going to stop. And this is a different angle for the same exercise. I wanted to show this angle just so you knew what I was doing with like my upper body because it was kind of hard to tell from a distance. But uh, again, start with the lower weight. You can use a kettlebell or a dumbbell for this. Uh, in my hand is a kettlebell. A dumbbell is the thing with, that looks more symmetrical that I was using in the other exercises. And again, with this, it's really important to keep your back straight and your shoulders back. So instead of rounding your shoulders, oh God, the eyeliner issue, okay. Rounding your shoulders like this, keep them back. If you have to, in between sets, like stretch backwards like this just to remind your body that you shouldn't be compensating with rounding your shoulders like this. And also it's just really bad posture and it makes you look very weak and kind of feeble. So I'd recommend not doing that to the best of your ability. So again, uh, this is the deadlift and the squat is when you just sit down lower. Um, so I think I'm gonna, yeah, this is a squat now. So just so you can understand the difference um, because sometimes people do confuse the exercises because from a distance they can look very similar. A squat is more of an up and down movement. A deadlift is a more back and forth movement. Just for anyone who's more, um, who's newer to the exercises can like understand that terminology more. Uh, the labels are there just to like help you out. I'm holding here, just in case you're curious, a 50 pound kettlebell. Uh, so like, the side, like the weight of a small toddler, I guess. But um, start off with whatever weight is more comfortable for you and work your way up. This is the last exercise that I did. There are again two exercises, but on the same machine. Um, I don't have a cool name for this, so I just say standing abductor machine. You can do this with a band around your knees instead or whatever you want. Um, I like the machine just because it's there. And by standing, you incorporate more muscles when you're doing this exercise versus when you traditionally sit like I'm gonna do now. Um, when you sit, you're using only the smaller muscles on the side. So both are important. And I think doing both just are, is uh, English. Uh, doing both uh, back to back, just make sure you're hitting everything and just making the most out of your time on the machine. And so I don't know why that text is so much bigger than all the other texts. I am so sorry. But despite my feeble editing skills, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that it was helpful in some way and that you learned something, anything, a new exercise, a new idea for the next time you go to the gym. Um, don't be afraid of lifting weights. It will not make you look manly, I promise. If it did, I would have fit into this shirt right now. <laughs> but I am a true believer that if you want to have any type of shape or definition in your body, it's very important to challenge your muscles and only running or only biking may not be enough for that. So incorporating some of these exercises may help. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, comment them below, message me, whatever you want. And I'll also leave my Instagram below where I post more, a lot more frequently and have shorter workout videos that are like quicker to watch as, lo as well as uh, personal training information. I do offer online personal training, so if you're interested, email me. Um, I hope I can figure out a way to make the email appear on the screen. If I can't, it'll be down in the description. But have a great day. I will catch you in the next video.